One more example for determining a derivative just given the table of values. So we're going with the same table that we had last time, but now the function's a little bit more complicated. H of X is defined as a quotient, and also we have a chain rule going on up here. So you just follow the rules. We're gonna determine the derivative of H to quotient. So um, first thing though, I when I'm looking at this again, I'm gonna remember the one third is a constant, so we'll ignore that. Uh, so with the quotient rule will take the bottom times the derivative of the top. That's f of x quantity squared, so it's a quotient, or I'm sorry, it's a chain rule. So it's derivative of the outside to leave the inside alone, f of x to the first, then times the derivative of the inside, which is f of x. So the derivative is f prime of x. So that's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom which is just g prime of x and then that's all over g of that squared so that's the derivative so now we have to determine what is that derivative when x equals one so we're just going to plug in one for all the x's and then come up with value. So I have this table where we can see what you get when you plug in one and you take that away. So here is the table. So first we have g of one. According to the table, g of 1 is equal to negative 1 right here. So negative 1 times 2 times f of 1. f of 1 is right here. It's 3. Times f prime of 1, which is right here, negative 3. And now we have minus lost my ten. Now we have minus f of one squared. So f of one was three. Three squared is nine. Times g prime of one, which is right here. And then this is all over g of x squared, g of 1 squared, and g of 1 again is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. That's it. Now, on the AP exam, especially this year's AP exam, um, leave it. Oops. Leave it. That's the unsimplified answer. I'm just going to simplify it. But you don't need to if they don't tell you to, so I wouldn't. But uh, we have one third times three times three is nine times two is 18. Minus nine times, oh, nine times two is 18. This turns out to be zero. That's surprising. So that's it.